We are talking about wisdom to do what? To sustain us. Wisdom to sustain us. We are talking about the wisdom to sustain us. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to distinguish difference. Wisdom is the ability to distinguish uh, difference. It is the ability to apply knowledge. It is the ability to apply knowledge. It is the ability to exercise the truth. The ability to exercise the truth. Because the truth that you know will not help you until you put it into action. The truth that you know will never help you until you apply it until you exercise it. Until you put it into action. God says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. Look at Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. He says, give us from NKJV. He says, behold, I am coming quickly. I am doing what? I'm coming quickly. Look at your neighbor and tell them God is coming quickly. Mm. God is coming very soon. To check what you are doing. <laughs> to inspect your work. To inspect your calling. God is coming to inspect your ministry. God is coming to inspect your family. God is coming quickly. He says what? Because he's coming quickly. Because I am coming quickly. Do what? Hold fast. Yani shikilia kwa? Kwa nguvu. Kwa nguvu. Shikilia kwa nguvu. The first there is not the first. Ya kwanza. Ni the first of. Na nguvu. Shikilia kwa nguvu. Kwa nguvu. Hold fast. Hold fast. Yani hiyo ministry mungu wa mekupatia because I am coming quickly and I am coming to inspect what you are doing. Therefore do what? Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. The favor I have given you. Eh? I am coming quickly. So do what? Hold fast that favor. The position I have put you. Hold fast that position. Because failure to that, what will happen? Failure to that, what will happen? That if you fail to hold fast, what will happen? Somebody else will take your crown. Somebody else will take your reward. Somebody else will take your family. If you don't hold fast, if you don't appreciate the blessing of God in your life, somebody else will come and take it. Okay, let me say it this way. If you fail to hold fast or to maintain and to sustain the blessing of God in your life, somebody else will be given it. Somebody else who can take care of what God has given them. They will take it. They will be given it. Somebody say I will never lose my blessing. Say again I will never lose my blessing. The business God has given you. If you don't take care of it. Somebody else will be given it. The opportunity to go to school. You think it is something simple. That's why some people lose favor forever. Because God gave you an opportunity to go to school and you squandered it. You decided it is not important for you. 
So you treated it like nothing. And so it was given to somebody else. The opportunity to go to school was given to somebody else. Because it was something that was given to you by God. He favored you. But you trivialized that favor. You took it for granted. You despised that favor. And because of that, God despised you. Now, let me ask you a question. If you give somebody something and then they treat it like it's nothing, how will you feel in your heart? How will you feel about that person? Will you not feel bad? Will you not feel offended? Will you not feel some level, some level of hatred towards that person? Because they are mistreating your gift to them. If I give you my suit, this suit is not washed by hand. I take it to dry cleaner. And then I find you squeezing it. Washing it with a brush. The kind of hatred that will enter me that time. <laughs> I will hate you. I will feel bad about you. Even if I don't want to hate you. I will feel something. I will feel something. If I give you a gift. You should be able to take care of it. Hallelujah. So when God gives you a gift. And then. You trivialize it. You take it for granted. You don't take care of it. You don't maintain it. You don't sustain it. You don't preserve it. What do you think God is feeling about you? That's why some people have lost their favor. Because he had plans for you. He wanted you to get to a certain position in life. To a certain place in life. There is a tragedy that God had you know made for you and he wanted you he designed your life very well and then you messed everything because of taking lightly what he has given you say that is not my portion that's why some people even after you pray for them they will continue to struggle why because they lost favor with God they did what? You have to redeem yourself. You have to do what? Redeem yourself. You have to deliver yourself. Look back into your life and see the mistakes that you have done. You have made. The things God gave you. And you took them for granted. You treated them like nothing. Look back and see. And begin to repent. And begin to repent. And begin to repent. Failure to that. You will continue to be in the black books of God. I delete your name from the black books of God. In the name of Jesus. I say I remove your names from the blacklist of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus clear your name. Delete your name from the blacklist of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, My father, my maker, give me favor with you. Restore my favor with you. Restore my favor with you. All the days of my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So let's take and treat the blessings of God with care. With what? With care. So the responsibility of keeping the blessing is yours. It's not God's. It's yours. It's not God's. Amen. That company God has given you. The responsibility of keeping it there. Is yours. That business that God has given to you. 
the responsibility of keeping it there. It's yours. Solomon said, you have given me these great people to lead. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom so that I can be able to lead them. In other words, give me wisdom so that I can continue to be a king. Continue to rule. Continue to be in the position that you have placed me. Give me wisdom. Lift up your hand and say, Father, give me wisdom. Say again, Father, give me wisdom. Because failure to have the wisdom of maintaining your blessing, it is disastrous. It is disastrous. Why do we need wisdom? Number one, we say it, number one, when we lack, or when you lack the wisdom to maintain the blessing of God, you fall into a season of famine. Number two, and you can write Genesis 41, 29, and 30. Genesis 41, 29, and 30. You fall into a season of famine. A season of famine. A season of lack. A season of scarcity. A season of scarcity. Of a season of praying too much and getting only a little. A season of working too hard only to receive little results. Somebody said that is not my portion. Say again, I refuse that kind of life. A season of famine. Famine of favor. Famine of wisdom. A famine of opportunities. Everybody else finds opportunity. You don't. Everybody else promoted. You are demoted. Everybody else find an opportunity to go to abroad. You are still here struggling. And you have nothing serious you are doing here. You are in the season of famine. I take your name from that list of people that are in the season of famine. I remove you from the season of famine. I say I pluck you out of the season of famine. And I plant you into the season of forever eternal plenty. In the name of Jesus. He says seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. And the seven years of famine will eat the good years. The years of plenty. May that never become your portion. My opportunities, my opportunities, my opportunities, my opportunities, and then kwa sababu ya kuto shikilia na nguvu, my opportunities in akauka. Alafu sasa unaingia kwa season ya kukosa, season ya dryness, season ya dryness. Inakuwa mingi sana mbaka kila kitu luko umetengeneza wakati wa plenty kinaisha. Kila kitu luko umetengeneza shamba ulikuwa umenunua unauza nyumba umejenga unauza wa familia ulikuwa ume, ume, umepata inapotea yani vitu mzuri zote zenye ulikuwa nazo zinaisha unaingia kwa season ya, ya dryness unakuwa kama dry bones tukisema kulikuwa na life awezi ukaamini if people say that once you were born again they cannot believe. If people show you a picture when you were in a suit, they cannot believe that was you. Make that never become your story. Make that never become your story. When they look at your hair, those days in the photos, they wonder what happened to you. Nimrogimgani huyu alikuroga na akakufa. May that never be said about you. I said, may that never be said about you. That's why we have to hold on fast. The blessing 
that God has given us. This opportunity you have, hold it fast. This blessing that God has given you, hold it fast. That you don't enter into the season of dryness and famine. Amen. Number two, when you fail, when you fail, or when you lack the wisdom to maintain the blessing of God, you fall into a season of torture. A season of torture. A season of torture. Let me say this. There is something in you that keeps you away from the tortures of this life. There is something in you that keeps you away from the tortures of this life. The presence of God is what keeps the torturers of this world away from you. Let me say that again. The presence of God is what keeps you or it is what keeps the torturers of this world away from you. The presence of God is what keeps you away from the torturers of this world. If it wasn't for the presence of God, the torturers of this world would have caught up with you and they would have destroyed you. They would have tortured you until you are nobody. Until you are nothing. But because of the presence of God, you are still collected. You are still gathered. You are still in one piece. If it wasn't for the presence of God in your life, you would be torn into pieces. That will never happen to us. That will never happen to us. If it wasn't for the presence of God, we will be torn into pieces. Glory to Jesus. Lift up your hand and say thank you Jesus. For keeping my life together. For keeping my family together. For keeping my business together. For keeping my career together. The devil wanted to scatter you. The devil wanted to scatter your career. The devil wanted to scatter your business. But the presence of God kept you. In one piece. The presence of God. Say thank you Jesus. For being into my life. Say again thank you Jesus. For being into my life. Look at Psalms 124. Verse 1. We read the whole passage. Psalms 124. Verse 1 to verse 8. What does it say? Let's read together. Are you reading? Let's go together. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now may Israel say, give us from NKJV. Behold. No. 124 verse 2. 124. Psalms 124. Not 123. If, let's read together, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when the wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us, the stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Let's go faster. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. 
and we have escaped our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth where is your help in the name where is your help your help is not in your good way of doing business it is not in your demeanor it's not in your calmness it's not in your humility it's not in your prayer your help is where in the name of the Lord had it not for the Lord who was on our side they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us it is God who protected you when the devil was angry about you it is God who protected you when the witches of your village were angry about your job about your business about your family about your salvation it was god who protected you when the world was unhappy about your prayer life when your neighbors were unhappy about your business it was god who helped you it is god who refused to give you up to them as prey ni mungu alikataa kukupeana kwao kama chakula ni Mungu Mungu alikataa kukupeana kwao kama mawindo alikataa na wewe alifanya nini alikataa na wewe there is something in you that keeps you away from the torturers of this world you fall into the hands of the torturers when you fail when you lack the wisdom to keep yourself in the presence of God the wisdom to keep yourself in the wisdom of God what happens to you you fall into the hands of the torturers you enter you fall into a season of torture and they begin to torture you they will never torture you I said they will never torture you because you will maintain the wisdom to keep yourself in the presence of God you will maintain the wisdom of reading the Bible every morning, every noon time, and every evening. You will maintain the wisdom of prayer. The wisdom of prayer. The wisdom of praying. The wisdom of holiness. The wisdom of obedience. May God give you such wisdom. May God maintain that wisdom. May God give you that wisdom. When Solomon lost the wisdom of staying in the presence of God, he started building altars for his women. The women he had married from other countries. And they introduced him into idolatry, into idol worship. And that is when he lost. That is when he lost the presence of God. That is when he lost the presence of God. The only thing that saved Solomon was the covenant of God with his father David. That, was, that is the only thing that saved Solomon. That is the only thing that saved Solomon. So don't try this at home. Don't be like Solomon because your father did not have a covenant with God like his father. His father had a covenant with God but your father was a drunkard your father was a was a wizard your father was a, was somebody evil a wicked man so what do you think will happen to you will you not be destroyed so easily like an insect i say that will never be your, your story i say that will never be your story in the mighty name of jesus is somebody shouting hallelujah Somebody say, keep me in your presence. Say, my father, my God, keep me in your presence. Look at Judges 16. Write this down. There is something you carry. If you lose you become like everybody else. There is something you carry. 
if you lose and i pray that that day will never come if you lose you become like everybody else you become like everybody else you become like everybody else somebody say i refuse to be like everybody else say i refuse to be tortured like everybody else we are the children of god the bible says that we are the chosen generation so we are not supposed to suffer like everybody else because we are a chosen generation we belong to god and greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world how can you carry the greater one and become the simple one how can you carry the greater one and then the simple people the simple torturers of this world are able to get to you and make you suffer somebody say i refuse to suffer oh i say say i refuse to suffer the witches of this world should not make you suffer the wizards of this world should never make you suffer the enemies of this world should never make you suffer human beings should never make you suffer say i refuse to suffer in the hands of men oh make that your confession say i refuse to suffer in the hands of men ah, why should people make you cry why should people make you cry somebody say i refuse that life amen look at judges 16 there is something in you if you lose it you become like everybody else you suffer like everybody else you lack like everybody else you struggle like everybody else you bleed like everybody else you get yourself in accidents like everybody else but we are not supposed to be like that we are the children of the most high god some say five or six says that you are the children of the most high god you are the children of the most high god you should not suffer like people you should not suffer like everybody else let's go to verse 16 look at verse 16 glory to god somebody say i refuse to suffer like everybody else say i refuse to be tortured like everybody else in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i refuse to be tortured like everybody else now look at what the bible says let's read together i want to go and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death can you look for a different translation i want you to change the word vexed hmm. yes with such nagging she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death continue hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man somebody say I will never be like any other man say again I refuse to be like anybody else verse 7 18 verse 18 says what when Delilah saw that he had told her everything she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines come back 
once more he has told me everything so the rulers of the philistines returned with the silver in their hands verse 19 the devils that god delivered you from they will never return to you the devils that once were taken out by jesus will never return to you in the mighty name of jesus the devils that supposed are supposed to come and torture you will not come to you again the devils that tortured your father until he died prematurely will never be able to torture you and your children i say the devils that tortured your mother until your mother died of depression will never come to torture you again together with your children you are delivered forever they will never return to you sicknesses will never return to you the torturers of this world will never return to you somebody shout hallelujah verse 19 says what having put him to sleep on her lap she called a man to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him look at that they began to do what give us from nlt they began to subdue him they began to subdue him they were able to control him they are now able to control him nothing demonic will be able to control you nothing ancestral will begin or will be able to control you and your family any controlling spirits any controlling voices from your family that are demonic that are anti pro your progress that are anti your prosperity that are anti your growth i decree they will never be able to control you they will never have control over your life are you shouting a believing amen are you shouting a better amen, amen. delilah lured samson to sleep with his head in her lap and then she caught in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair in this way she began to bring him down nobody will bring you down no devil will bring you down no evil spirit will bring you down the delilahs of this world will not bring you down i say that the delilahs of this world will not bring you down they will not bring down your family they will not bring down your company they will not bring down your ministry they will not bring down your calling they will not bring down your business they will not bring down your favor they will not bring down your wisdom they will not bring down your finances they will not bring down your establishment they will not bring down what god has given given you in the mighty name of jesus give us from kjv what does kjv say and she made him asleep she made him sleep upon her knees can you imagine that a woman making you to sleep on his on her knees a woman anybody anybody that is causing you to sleep today in the name of Jesus may the spirit of God deal with them anybody causing you to sleep when you are supposed to be praying I command them to die by fire I command the fire of God to deal with them how can somebody make you sleep on their knees on their knees afadhali angemfanya yeya piga magoti alale kwa magoti ya kiomba kuliko sasa anamleta kwa magoti yake analalia kwa magoti usiku unaisha hapo akim akimnyoa anointing akimtoa power akimwibia nguvu za Mungu akimtoa kwa uwepo wa Mungu that such people will never have access to you such people will never access your life such people will never locate you such people will never locate your family such people will never locate your business such people will never locate your children are you shouting a believing amen and she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to do what and she began to do what 
she began to torture him to afflict him to afflict him she began when she was able to subdue him when she was she managed to get him to lose the wisdom of staying in the presence of God not staying on the laps of a woman when she made her lose the wisdom to stay in prayer she was able to torture him she was able to begin to torture him i decree in the name of jesus nobody will be able to torture you i said nobody will be able to torture your family so they start by luring you say nobody will lure me hey, say again i will never be trapped Say again, I will never be trapped. Say I refuse to be trapped by the devil, by demonic people, by wicked people. I refuse to be trapped. I refuse to be lured into traps in the name of Jesus. When they manage to bring you into that trap, it is very easy for them to shave off your anointing. To shave off the glory of God in your life. To shave off your wisdom. To shave off your revelation. You used to have revelations. You used to have the power, the ability to discern. You used, you used to see things before they happen. And now because you have been lured. You have been trapped. And now you are sleeping on the laps of Delilah. You lack the wisdom. The wisdom to stay in the presence of God. The wisdom to keep the blessing that God has given you. Now he's able, the devil is able to torture you. This world is able to torture you. And that is where the devil wants us to go. That is where the, that is the vision and the agenda of Satan towards your life towards your calling towards your ministry towards your children he wants to trap you but i decree he will never prevail i decree he will never prosper i decree he will never succeed i decree his plans are nullified his plans are paralyzed in the name of jesus nobody will trap you nobody will trap your life nobody will trap your salvation nobody will trap your anointing nobody will trap your calling in the name of jesus lift up your hand and say my father my maker my father my god protect me from demonic traps protect me from the torturers of this world make that your prayer go before the lord father may you protect us protect my church protect my people protect my sons and daughters protect this congregation protect these people father from demonic torturers from the torturers of this world from the demons of this world from the men of this world that that traps them that lures them into traps so that they can torture them so that they can afflict them in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus look at this look at this david says before i was tortured before i was afflicted i went astray nili torokea mungu kabla nianze kuteswa kabla nianze kupitia mateso nili torokea mungu sema nimekataa kutoroka Sema mimi sita toroka. Sema tena mimi nimekataa kutoroka. Oh God, it is that serious. When we run away from God, the torturer gets empowered. Yaani mtesaji huwa anapata nguvu. Kwa sababu ni kitu moja tu inafunga milango ya mtesaji kuingia katika maisha yako na kukutesa kitu moja tu naye ni uwepo wa Mungu katika maisha yako had it not 
been for the Lord had it not been for the Lord who was on our side they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us kama sio mungu kuwa upande wetu tungemezwa na tukiwa uhai na madui wetu wakati hasira yao ilinuka kinyume na maisha yetu kinyume na biashara yetu kinyume na ndoa zetu kinyume na afya yetu kinyume na furaha yetu kinyume na kibali cha maisha yetu kinyume na opportunities Mungu ametupatia kama sio Mungu kwa upande wetu wangemeza kazi zetu wangemeza huduma zetu wangemeza afya yetu wangemeza furaha yetu kama sio Mungu kutulinda kama sio Mungu kwa upande wetu usiwahi poteza Mungu kataa kupoteza Mungu kataa kupoteza Mungu mpendo tukatae kupoteza Mungu inua mikono yako juu mwambie Bwana nimekataa kupoteza nimekataa kupoteza uwepo wako katika maisha yangu